Now running a transitional housing facility can be incredibly fulfilling. And especially if you find yourself that you're truly operating in your calling and in your purpose so that you can truly help others. However, it also comes with its challenges. So before you get started, there are some critical things that you need to know. So I hope you're ready for it. Welcome to Live For Free, where we transform lives. And in today's episode, as I always say, we're talking about my favorite topic, which is transitional housing. And I'm gonna speak specifically about the pros and cons associated with running a transitional housing facility. So let's jump right in with the pros, because there are so many pros, but I wanna make sure you fully understand the benefit of actually running a transitional housing facility. And the first one being that the, the, what you're doing, and, and, and most people think at first it should be about the money. Even though the money is a pro, and I, I'll just briefly say it's a pro, because in transitional housing, depending on the contract that you get, you can significantly bring in thousands of dollars per person, potentially, in a transitional housing facility that you set up. And I say that because most people in this space who say, oh, I want to open a transitional house, um, they look at the money and I have to at least say it up front, but it is not the top pro about what it is that we do. Because truly the money does help you be able to say, oh, we can really do well, but it is a big lift. You're getting a big lift for that money. So don't think because you get into transitional housing, you're just gonna be like hand over fist and it's gonna be easy breezy. You know, to whom much is given, much is required. That scripture clearly applies in this situation because it is a pro, because you can bring in, and I've, I've heard, like I, I think I was talking with one of, the, one of my mentees and she was setting something up and she was, she had found a contract. She was going to make like, I want to say like $30,000 per person in her housing model. Like that is, I will say unheard of, but as we were walking down that path, there is money in this space for that. But just know to whom much is given, much is required. You will have a big lift related to that individual when you're getting that kind of money versus the end that is, you know, you could make as, as low as, I and mean, it's even gone up to like six, $700 a month per person. Just depends on what you're creating and, and what you have to do for that. But that is clearly the pro that most people look at, but that is not my number one pro um, that I'll sit, that I'm getting ready to talk about next. Cause to me, the positive impact that you're gonna make on your community when doing this work, hands down, is like the top reason why you get into this space. People who get into this space, I, I want you to, as you're considering it, because you're watching me because you're considering this for yourself, I want you to make sure you're getting into it for the right reasons. And when you truly feel your call to do this work, or to go down a particular path and you wanna create a transitional housing facility, that is gonna override any other challenge that you have. So when you are making that positive impact on the community, helping someone else, that's what's so powerful, when you're helping someone else move toward a state of stability and self-sufficiency, it's priceless. Like you, 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 many of us do this without even getting paid anything. So when you have those webs and flows that happen in life in this space, you do it when you get that one person that you've been able to help. That is the impact that you fully can make in this space. And it's powerful what it not only will do for you as, as far as because you feel good about what you've done, but what you've done for that person who then is going to help somebody else because you always teach from a space of paying forward. So that as I think about the impact that you're going to make on the community, on the world is the highest positive of doing this type of work. When you know you're called to do it, to work with a particular population, and you do that work. That is the number one, as I'm, and I'm gonna say that over and over again, 
the number one pro for getting into this space. Now, I will say that another pro, as I sort of alluded to, are grants. There are funds set aside specifically for helping people, depending on the population you're working with. And you wanna be able to find the right one that fits for you and then one that's in need. Um, if you want more information on how to do that, send me some comments, um, reach out to me, book some time with me, because those are the type of things I get excited about, is finding out what you want and then seeing and teaching you how to navigate in that space. But as you're going through that, finding out the grants and the different subsidies that are out there that provide financial support that you can get to a nonprofit, especially if you're running a nonprofit, but there are things you can do even as a for-profit where you can also benefit from those grants that are coming in. And I can share that information with you as well. So those are the type of things that truly can take you to the next level in this space. And those are some positives to running a transitional housing facility. Another pro is the fact that you are going to consistently have a need for this type of housing. It's not going away, especially when you're dealing in urban areas that have high rates of homelessness and, ho and housing instability. These are the things that will make sure you will never go unoccupied unless you just you just don't have good services. You're, we, we pretty much run 100% occupancy at all times, especially because of the niche that we serve. Um, and if you're serving a niche that will keep your doors open or at all times, I mean, that is what you wanna do is find the right niche that will make sure you have 100% occupancy, not even just 100% occupancy, but a wait list. We've been running a wait list for several of our properties, running easily six plus months, sometimes a year out, because people don't, when they get into that transitional housing, you give them the support that they need, you're constantly having individuals who can fill that spot and you're always looking for more property because you have such a need. There's such a high demand for transitional housing. If you, when you choose to get into this space, if you choose to get into this space and you get into it right, you will always have something that you can contribute to your community because you'll always have a need for that. Now, another thing I'll say, and I alluded to this also, is how fulfilling you are going to be by doing this work because it's a hard work it's not it's not even though it, it you know you do it but your heart is in it right like this is these are things you'll do just because you love doing it not because you reap a reward that might be monetary it's what your heart feels you feel so reward you feel so rewarded in just the things that you will be able to help others do um, it just it just takes you to a whole nother level I'm gonna share a story um, because this year I can say I hang my hat on a lot even when life happens to me, life happens to all of us. Things happen, we have webs and things happen in life that cause you to sort of pause and do something different. Uh, but there was a time when devastation financially happened in, 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 in my life. And I'll just say that to where when that happened, it caused me to like, I literally could feel it. I could feel the pressure from it, but to then be able to do for others, took it to a whole nother level. So I'm just gonna say this, when life happens to you and you have an experience internally that causes you to reset, use that time to give to someone else. When you give to someone else, it will do wonders for just the fulfillment that you need. And that's what God desires for us is that we do for others instead of doing for ourselves. So when you find yourself in a space where, you know, something to, happened that you just don't agree with, don't like, whatever, it was a setback, no matter what happens in life, get into the work of giving to someone else. Even if it's just to go go work with another agency and go uh, to a food pantry or go give out food, go make food, because that's what I did, um, but go do something for someone else because it'll let you know and it'll teach you gratitude because I was so grateful just for being able to one, help someone else, having the within my ability to be able to help someone else. That's what this work does. 
So when you are in a space where you are doing work that is fulfilling you and making you feel good about your contribution to the world, that is the one of the largest pros in doing this work. And then I will say this, even in this, is, and this here is a pro, because in when you're in this work, you're gonna run into a lot of people who care like you care. And you're gonna create a network of friends that you rely on each other for a variety of different things. Even if it's just simply support and just to have someone to talk to, you're gonna have so much opportunity and resources available to you that is just like, it far exceeds everything else that you can do. I will say, since my journey of being in this for 14 years, I have created some great relationships with some great people who truly are people who have hearts in this space. And you know who you are if you're watching me. I love you because those are, they are the ones who continue to help me even when things get hard. They're the people I talk to. They're the ones that when things, that I need more information on something, they're the ones I tap on. Those are resources that are priceless that you need to be in this space. You need to be able to know other service providers, other organizations who are not only people who you can partner with, but you can create relationships with that are long lasting beyond the work that you do, but that you can truly call your friends and your tribe. So I just want to give a shout out to my tribe. You know who you are and I love you and all the work that we do together. We've been doing these last few years here in St. Louis. Now, the last benefit I will share is related to tax benefits because truly um, having these type of properties, especially if you're a nonprofit, um, can give you some tax benefits that you wouldn't realize if you weren't in a nonprofit situation or if you are in a for-profit and you're utilizing the resources of that nonprofit, you got a lot of benefits. So being uh, an opportunity to get those opportunities, being in a position to get those opportunities is tremendous. And that is also a plus. Now, as we shift, because where there are pros, there are also cons. I want you to be aware of the things that you will encounter if you plan to run a transitional housing facility. But before we get into that, please click the subscribe button and click the notification button so that when a new video comes out, as we talk about ways in which you can live for free, you'll be the first one to be able to watch that video. So jumping right in, because there are some cons. And the biggest being that you, it's a complex management system that you have to create so that you can manage. And it is, it requires a lot of moving parts to make sure that that system can be seamless. So being able to create that, I don't know how much of a creator you are, but you have to create those services and those resources so that you can be able to create a successful transitional housing facility. And if you don't have skill sets that allow, how do I turn this around? But you wanna make sure that you are compliant with everything that you have going forward, you know everything going into it so that your funding is more stable because the more stable your funding is, then you have a long-term plan for sustaining that program that you're creating. So that is truly critical. Now, a couple more points I'll mention. As I say, we're talking about a lot of pros and cons um, and it seems like we have a whole more, a lot more cons on this side, but these are cons I believe that can be you can, you just have to learn how to mitigate these cons. So as I'm listing pros and cons, know that they can, those cons, I believe that can be, you can, you just have to learn how to mitigate these cons. So as I'm listing pros and cons, know that they can, those cons can be mitigated to where you have a whole lot of pros. So keep that in mind. Couple more pro uh, cons that I want to mention um, is that turnover. Um, there is the potential for a high turnover in transitional housing, depending on how long your program is and depending on how quickly you can get people um, into permanent housing. So that clearly of that turnover could be deemed as a con, but you could turn that around too, just to make sure that you've got measures in place to make sure that that turnover doesn't really hurt you when you still stay in high um, occupancy and you, you're able to turn that room around quickly to then bring in more people. Because at the end of the day, your goal is to touch as many people as you can in this housing space so that you can ultimately transform the world. So that should be like your whole thing. And then I will say this, and um, 
I'll say two things. Uh, first of all, when you're dealing in a community that where you want to have your transitional housing facility located, you might get some pushback. Yep. You might have neighbors that say, I don't want that next to my house, right? Those are things you have to deal with. So you have to have ways in which you can change that stigma and that misconception about the residents that you're serving. And depending on the population that you serve, they could be excited about it or the population that they might not be excited about, how to counter that. So clearly I've got training on this and, and how to maximize your transitional housing experience. Clearly, if you're interested in taking part of that training, um, definitely click and look in the links below in our description because I've got more information on how you can take part in that. And the last one I'll mention, um, because it is a toll. There's an emotional toll that can be deemed as a con in this space. So understanding, and especially dealing on the population that you're working with or why you're working on with that population, that can put a toll on you personally. You can get to the state where you are burned out, where you're, where you're under a lot of stress. That is a con. So you have to make sure you put measures in place to make sure that that's not sets that allow you to be able to, um, to do that work and manage that building. That's going to be a problem. So I want to tap on if you, if you need some help with that, send me some comments below. I specialize in this. I've been doing this for 14 years and being able to create systems that work in transitional housing. Um, and I should have some details in the description because we are always doing training and we're always creating opportunities where I can educate people in this space because this is a great work. Send me a comment below or tap on me there to see what we've got coming um, and join our school community as we talk about this space because you need those resources. You need the training so that you're not making the same mistakes I made over the years. And I, it was like, I learned these things and I want to share them with you. So definitely join our school community so that you can gain this knowledge so that you can manage this complex facility that you are about to build. Because that, if you don't have those resources, that can be daunting. And I want you to be able to be successful. Another uh, con is dealing with um, compliance. And especially if you are in a municipality that has a lot of regulations related to transitional housing, it does exist. And they're different from municipality to municipality to municipality, even at the state level. You have to know what your requirements are so that you can be able to navigate well in this space. And if you don't know how to do that well, yeah, that's can, that can be a big problem. I've actually heard of individuals who buildings have been shut down because of it. You didn't follow a process. Next thing you know, they know you're there. You didn't follow the process. And what are they doing? They're coming in and either shutting your building they're either, because they're going to correct you. You're going to correct and do it right or you're going to close it up. And if you don't do that, um, they can shut you down. They can take your property. Those are realities that can happen if you do not properly set up your transitional housing facility in your community. So you're going to want to make sure you do that well or you're going to find yourself in trouble and you have invested all this money in a property that what you now either have it shut down and no more revenue coming in or b you um have it taken from you you don't want any of that do not have them come for you okay so that clearly is a con is dealing with the regulatory compliance and then as it relates to funding you know, we talked about some high funding opportunities that are available to you, but what happens when that funding goes away? How are you gonna now maintain? What do you have as a backup? I can tell you right now, you don't want all your eggs in one basket because you're gonna find yourself in trouble um, to where you're not gonna be able to sustain that property the way that you need to. So you do have challenges related to that, making sure that you are delivering on what you say you're gonna do and making sure that you properly follow the processes that are required, especially if you're partnering with an agency, knowing how to properly partner with them so that you're giving them exactly what they need. Um, I'm going to tell you this short story because I know we've been long-winded, but I get excited about transitional housing. Um, I had an incident where, um, and it wasn't, I'm not going to take full responsibility for what happened, but I didn't know all the requirements going into the contract. And I kept giving them exactly what they were asking for month after month no issues and we were doing this for a year and a half a year and a half doing the work performing meeting goals 
and there was like one document they asked for. And I was like, what? Like, where are you coming from with one document that I didn't have? And that one document I didn't have created like the snowball effect to the point where I lost that contract. So when you lose contracts, that is an, a challenge that you are hit with. And I will say, when you get into these, and I'm gonna say this clearly, because I've learned my lesson from that moment, I am so solid now. I'm making sure I understand the clear, what, what is it that you want? From the moment I turn it in, I'm double checking. Are you sure this is everything? Is there anything else you need? Because by doing your due diligence, and that was my lesson learned. I didn't have the, I didn't have the, I didn't know what could and couldn't be done. And as a result of that, I lost the contract. So you want to make sure that you not an issue for you once you get there, because you're going to get to the point where it's going to be a lot and you might have to take a break, which I've been there, done that. Um, but then your heart, because of why you're in it, remember that pro or why you're doing this, it starts pulling on you and you find other creative ways to still do what your heart wants to do and operate in this space. So I will tell you, burnout is natural and stress. You're going to feel that emotional toll. Those things are going to happen. Um, so making sure that you've got ways in which you can counter that is where your success will lie. So I know we've talked a lot about ways in which you are going to successfully uh, run a transitional housing facility and you've heard the pros and the cons and, and that an impact that you're gonna make um, at the end of the day, because there were a lot of cons that we talked about, but the pros, in my perspective, outweigh the cons because when you can think about how you are fully impacting your community and the people that you want to serve it's priceless so i will say this has been an amazing journey there's more to come on this topic i want you to watch our next videos as they come out because truly this is a space you want to operate in and this is where you want to get it. I, I, I hope you continue to watch the things that we have. We've got a school community I want you to see. Join our school community so that you can get the tips and the insights, you know, and the support that you need as you're on this journey. Because truly, you know, what we're talking about transitional housing is even bigger. I'm talking about teaching people how to live for free and teaching people how to have the lifestyles that they want to have no matter where they're coming from. And if you're an individual that's looking to operate a transitional housing facility, you're gonna need that support. And as you transform your life, cause you're transforming your life through this work and impacting others to then be able to transform their lives. That is my whole mission, is to truly help individuals transform their lives. Because as you transform your life, you will be transforming the world. Thank you.